live stream when you're ready and uh, just let me know when that's begun. Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Vale of Whitehorse Planning Committee. I'm Councillor Max Thompson and I'll be chairing this meeting. Um, can I just make a housekeeping announcement? Uh, for those joining remotely, when you're not speaking, please can you ensure your microphone is muted and your camera is off? Uh, if you share a presentation on the screen, please stop sharing as soon as it's not needed. Uh, public speakers must only have their cameras on and be unmuted when addressing the committee or answering questions of clarification in their designated slots. Uh, evacuation procedure. Uh, in, the event of, in, in the event of an emergency, please evacuate this building by the nearest exit, which is the corridor over there, um, and uh, stand at assembly point nine in the outside area beyond the fire exit. Uh, on arriving at this meeting, you should have read the emergency evacuation procedure and signed the fire register. So please inform Democratic Services if you have not done so. Uh, mobile phones off, if that's all right. And then uh, members of the public who wish to leave the meeting after the application they're interested in has been considered. Please do so, but please do so quietly. Uh, finally, when the meeting has ended, I will ask for confirmation the live stream has ended. At that point, please make your way out of the building, remembering to sign out as you leave. Um, Final point, uh, this is a meeting in public, not a public mm -hmm. meeting, and I ask that any members of the public attending in person or virtually ensure they do not shout out or disrupt <clears throat> committee's deliberations outside of those who have registered to speak in their allocated slots. Okay, very good. Uh, so that's my Chair's announcements. Um, agenda item two, apologies for absence. Darius, do we have any apologies this evening? Thank you, Chair. We've received apologies for absence from Councillor Jenny Hannaby, who is substituted with Councillor Paul Barrow. Perfect. And would you mind taking a roll call so people watching online know who's in the room? Thank you, Chair. So, Councillors Max Thompson. Here. Val Shaw. Here. Ron Batston. Here. Cheryl Briggs. Here. Paul Barrow. Here. Diana Gagoba. Here. Robert Madison. Here. Mike Bickhills. Here. And Janet Shea. Here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item three is the minutes of the meeting of the 30th November 2022. Uh, does anyone have any comments or can I sign them as a correct record of the meeting? Okay, I will sign those as correct record. Uh, General item four, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest this evening? Um, um, uh, I'm the ward councillor for um, agenda item seven. I'm Max, so I'll sit out as soon as that starts, apart from making a statement. Of course, thank you very much. Um, urgent business. Emily, do we have any urgent business this evening? No, Chair. Okay, very good. Uh, finally, public participation. We have a number of speakers on the two items we're going to be considering this evening, and I confirm that a couple of statements were also circulated to members of the committee prior to the meeting, and we may make reference to them in our deliberations. So with that, I turn to the first of our two items this evening, which is Antwerp Stud in Lepkin Regis. Martin, I believe you're presenting on this one. Thank you, Chair. This shows the application site just north of Leckham Regis. Uh, it's known as Antwick Stud, a commercial equine business. The application site is part of the Antwick Stud site. You see it as in red here, principally the three main stable blocks. And you see also that that line in red, the access drive to the main road. The rest of the site is etched in blue. And you'll see also indicated here the main roads to the East Portal Road and Windmill Hill. To the west and north, the byway open to all traffic that circles around the wider site area. And to the south, I've indicated the coach house, which is the nearest neighbour to the site, which is 95 metres away approximately. As I say, the application relates to the three stable blocks. This is an aerial photograph and by means of orientation they're just known as here as the northwest stables, the southwest stables and the southeast stables. You can also see on this photograph the two residential dwellings on the site, the cottage and Antwerp Stud House itself. And in plan form it looks like that. And the proposal is to convert the three stable blocks into three separate dwellings. This is the block plan for that for the proposal. So the Northwest Stable will become unit one uh, with a glazed corridor inserted on the inner face of the building. 
you see there, you, the southwest stable will become unit two, being with a glazed corridor on the inner face and a, a single store extension projecting to the south to form an enclosure. And the southeast stable will form unit three, uh, again with a glazed corridor and uh, an extension on the south side projecting to the west, again to form an enclosure. Now, the red line here encompasses the application site and defines the change of use of land as well. So the area within the red line is the change of use to residential. The remainder of the site is not subject to that change of use proposal. Uh, you also see here the parking, which is being arranged within that built form, uh, within the built framework. And there are two trees on the site uh, indicated there as well. Now, the site lies within the area of outstanding natural beauty, and uh, the southern boundary of the site forms a boundary with the village conservation area, just by way of reference. Okay, going to the detailed plans, these are the floor plans for unit one. Uh, you can see the clays in beige there. It's the elevations for that. Uh, unit two, uh, with the southern projection, you can see there. And built form terms, it's no higher than the existing stable building, and uh, levels will be adjusted to account for the slope on the site. Unit three, um, which will have the western projection, south and western projection, again, no higher than the existing stable building. So if we go on to the photographs of the site, this is coming in from the main road along the access drive, and you can see Antiquestead House there, the red brick building right, and the stables in the distance. You can see the slope on the site. This is looking back towards the main road. The entrance to the stables and the entrance to the site, in effect, is in the lower foreground on the left, and the gravelled area and this looks back down the access drive towards the main road. Uh, the house in the distance, Crescom House, is not part of the application site but that fronts on to Windmill Hill. Uh, the wall to the right effectively demarcates the boundary with the conservation area. So the conservation area is the land beyond that wall on the right hand side. The next slide looks directly in that direction. There we go. Uh, so that's looking south across the wall into the conservation area. And you just see some of the buildings in Mill Paddock, uh, which are 150 metres of the site. You can see the spacious nature of this part of the conservation area. That's looking at the nearest neighbour, which is the coach house, which, as I said, is approximately 95 metres away. So if you go on to the buildings on site, this is the southeast stable building. So this would have a two-story extension projecting in the foreground, parallel to the range on the left. That's the southwest stable block. So that would have a two-story extension projecting out parallel to the fence line, about two-thirds of the way across on the left hand side. See the two significant trees on the site there. The, the one on the right is the one that's got the tree preservation order on it. Both trees are to be retained as part of the scheme. And this is the northwest stable block further up the hill. <clears throat> there are two existing mobile homes on the site which are due to be removed as part of this application as a condition uh, requiring that. Uh, this is looking north from the state, behind the stables, towards the boat, the byway open to all traffic, which is behind that tree and hedge line. You can see in the distance, and it's approximately 200 metres from the site. These are, this is the other, the, the residential buildings on the site, or within the Antic Stud site, not part of the application site, the cottage and Antic Stud house again. You can see the tea period tree trunk on the left. That's the rear of the south east stables just coming around from that view. And it's looking west towards the byway uh, to the west of the site, which is approximately 100 metres away, coming sides again marked by the tree and hedge line. 
And that's back to the block plan again. So the report considers the issues. You'll see the objections are listed in paragraph 2.1. There are no technical objections to the application. The report considers the principle of development, its design and landscape impact, particularly with regard to the a and its impact on the setting of the village conservation area, its impact on neighbours, primary safety, biodiversity and trees. And the report concludes that the impacts are acceptable. Uh, the proposal is considered to be quite a compact and contained form of development that doesn't significantly increase the built form on the site as it is at the moment and therefore has a limited impact on both the setting of the conservation area and the quality of landscape in the AMB. Therefore the recommendation is for approval conditions. Thanks very much Martin. I'm sure we'll turn to you for some questions once we've heard from our, our public speakers on this item. So uh, our first public, public speaker on this item is Councillor Lapsley, uh, a representative from uh, Lipton Regis Parish Council. Councillor Lapsley, are you there? Hello, yes, I am. Thank you, Chairman. Hello, um, good, evening. You, good evening. Yeah, we, we can hear you and we can see you and you have three minutes from when you're ready. <laughs> right, I'll start now then. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. As you know, I'm the Chairman of Letcombe Regis Parish Council. I'd like to um, say that the Council objects to this application on a number of grounds. Firstly, light pollution. The Parish Council objects to this application as it will significantly increase the amount of light pollution in the creation of three substantial residences. These have large glazed walls and roofs with a number of skylights. There will also be illuminated paths and roads and external lighting. The buildings are on a raised site within the West, North Wessex Downs AOMB. They will be clearly visible from a number of houses in the village from the public footpaths which run alongside two boundaries of the site and from the ridgeway and you haven't had a photograph of that view um, this evening. The site is also within an area well known for its dark skies and also enjoyed by bats, owls and other creatures which need dark darkness in order for them to survive. The authorities accepted that light pollution is of significance in and around Letcombe Regis and it would harm the local environment and enjoyment of the countryside. If this application and the previous outstanding application goes ahead, the combined light pollution would be the equivalent of over 50 three bedroomed houses on a sloping site in open countryside. Therefore, the PC objects to this application as it will substantially harm the AOMB environment in and around the village of Letcombe Regis. The PC would ask that before permission is given, evidence from an expert in controlling light pollution should be obtained. Objection two, creeping urbanisation. The creation of residences, gardens, amenity spaces, drives, paths, etc. will create an urban environment, albeit within an existing equestrian setup. The PC objects to the application as it creates an urban environment in open countryside and would like the authority to seek advice from an officer of the North West Downs AOMB about the impact of such urbanisation. This view doesn't appear in any of the documentation so far. Three, extra traffic movements. There will be an increase in traffic movements which will place considerable risk to other road users as they enter, yeah, 30 seconds. enter the site. Three, change of use. Within the application, there's no justification to show the stables are in fact redundant or disused. Finally, the applicant, we would hope, should enter into a legal agreement not to undertake any further residential building on land, to withdraw their previous application, and that the um, permitted development rights on this should be removed, and that the applicant should provide a report on how the light pollution will be mitigated which should be approved by an expert, and the temporary caravan should be removed before construction commences. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Councillor Lapsley. I'll ask if any members of the committee have any questions or clarification. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Lugova. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, you mentioned that uh, there is no evidence that stable is not in use at the moment. Uh, do I understand that correctly, that stable is currently in use? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, I I was asking regarding stables. Are there any courses in the stables at the moment? Not that I'm no, not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Councillor Briggs. Yeah, um, it was just um when you said that these three houses would be the same as the light from 50 houses. Um where did you where did you actually get this amount from? We, that just seems an awful lot to me. Yes, it is a considerable amount. There's been a planning application um, on the table since 2007, um, which initially asked for approval for um, an equestrian business, um, which would have taken up um, a space like a Tesco's shed on that site. This has never been approved. It's still outstanding. Um, there's a section 106 agreement, which it was subject to, which has never been um, fulfilled. And so we are anxious that the two applications now that are actually on that site, which are currently running, could end up with us having a massive um, development of 50 plus houses. Oh, I, I see. So do you think there might be 50 plus houses, not that? Well, the with, the three, with the three that have been, with, yes, with the three that are now being applied for, um, yes, it would be more than the, tom the total combination of the two applications. Thank you. Are there any further questions for Councillor Lapsley? I can't see any, so I'll say thank you very much for joining us this evening, Councillor Lapsley, um, and for your statements here tonight. Um, thank you. Right, I now uh, turn to our second uh, speaker, or I should say speakers, uh, Mr. Neil Warner and Mr. Samuel. Um, you will have three minutes to share between you, so if you could turn on your cameras and unmute, and uh, Councillor Lapsley, if you could please turn off your camera and unmute um, yourself. Thank you very much. Mr. Warner, Mr. Samuel, are you there? Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Warner, I'm here. Um, Good evening. Will Mr. Samuel be speaking as well, or is it just you, Mr. Warner? Hey, uh, Mr. Samuel's just listening in, so it'll just be me speaking this evening. Thank That's you. That's fine. You have three minutes when you're ready. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Neil Warner from JPPC. I'm the agent for the application, and as I've just mentioned, I'm speaking on behalf of the applicants, Martin and Jane Samuel, Samuel who are listening in. We've written to members to outline our comments, hopefully for ease of your reference, um, and. Uh, I think generally we'd just like to commend your officer's report to you. It sets out very clearly clearly those considerations which are material to the application and it uh, concludes with a recommendation of approval. The proposals before you find support in policy DP7 of the local plan and in the MPPF, uh, these policies acknowledge the need for new homes in rural areas if communities to, are to be maintained and they support the reuse of existing buildings. Uh, this is a sustainable means of uh, sustainable means of providing new dwellings and reduces pressure pressure on building for building on undeveloped land. There is no requirement in national or local policy to consider redundancy redundancy or lack of use. The proposals have been carefully designed and there'd be an appropriate reuse of existing buildings in a form that would be attractive and well appointed in terms of the amenity that would be provided to future occupiers. They'd be sympathetically landscaped and they would not harm the natural or scenic beauty of the AOMB. Uh, the proposals have also been carefully designed such that they will not detrimentally impact on any neighbours. They won't impact upon the local highway network, as has been confirmed by um, comments from Oxfordshire County Council, um, and they won't impact upon the setting of the conservation area. Uh, we just heard from Councillor Lapsey about uh, external lighting. Uh, officers have recommended, con recommended a condition to control any external lighting, which uh, is an appropriate way to deal with this. And on that point, I think I'd only like to point out to members that the existing stables that are there and other other activities, they're not controlled by any such condition. They could be lit and have lighting uh, provided to them uh, to their to, to whatever extent is required. Uh, and that's not something that the council can control at the moment. So we need to compare the future impact of lighting with what that current situation might be. Um, I think. Uh, I probably won't comment on any other 
Councillor Lapse's comments unless members ask me a direct question. So otherwise, I'll just uh, respectfully request members that they agree the officer's recommendation and grant plan commission. But as I said, if you have any questions, I'll endeavour to try and assist you with those. Thank you very much, Mr Warner. Uh, are there any questions from the committee? Uh, Councillor Pickles. Hello. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question about the about other developments on the site. I mean, clearly there's a concern that the previous speaker mentioned about. I mean, I mean clearly the, the, the equestrian business could be re-established on a different part of the site. So if you just clear that one up and, uh, and let me know what, what other plans there may or may not be and what the status of the previous planning application was, is or what is going to be. Yeah, certainly I'll, tr I'll try and help with that. Uh, uh, so at the moment, the application before the council, I think clearly sets out their intentions. What they're intending to do is move away from an equestrian development on site and they're going to look to some other form of development, which is a conversion of the buildings to provide uh, three dwellings. Um, the officer's report at 5.5, I think, sets out quite clearly that the, the two are um, exclusive. We can't implement both at the same time. So were any other application to come forward, that's going to be a fresh one, which the council can consider at that time. Um, but I, I think generally it's the, the the fact that the application is before you is a clear indication of the applicant's intent that they're, they're not progressing with equestrian endeavours on the site and they're going to take a, a different route. Are there any further questions, Ms Warner? Councillor Shelley. Yes, thank you. I, I was just wondering if they're not going to continue with equestrian use on the site, um, it does come with quite a, um, a substantial amount of acres. So I just wondered what those acres would be used for. Would they be looking at um, renting them out for equestrian use or what, what's their, their thoughts? Well, I, I, the remaining acres around there, there, there's no buildings associated with them. So I suppose they could graze horses on them. Somebody who's coming in may want to use it for a different purpose, an agricultural purpose. But really anything they're, they're put to can only be um, as you would any any particular field around around the district. If, if there was any other intentions, that's an application that would be required to be made to the council. And you have control over that um, in determining that application. Thank you. Are there any further questions? In which case, I say thank you very much for joining us this evening, Mr. Warner, and for your statements uh, here before us, and indeed your written statement prior to this as well. Um, so, you. with that, I'm going to turn to our next speaker, uh, Councillor Paul Barrow. Good evening, Councillor Barrow. Uh, like with everyone else, you'll have three minutes when you're ready. Thank you. Um, I'm the Ward Councillor. Parish Council and I have met the officers to understand in greater detail the background to this application. An application to convert the three stable block that Adbic stood to three dwellings was first made in 2005, but then withdrawn. A new application was submitted in 2007 to expand the equine business, which included building a new large indoor menage and riding school and increasing the number of stables from 37 to 67. Parish Council objected on a number of grounds, including the very large eight metres high indoor menage and increase in traffic. After further consultations between the applicant, bail officer, objectors and the parish council and submission of additional information, the decision on the application was delegated to the chair of planning and senior planning officer, but no decision was made. Because of the delays associated with the initial processing of the application, coupled with additional issues related to the applicants, the application then stalled with no pressure from the applicant for a decision and completion. The 2007 application was reviewed by, a new, reviewed by a new officer four years ago, but the applicants were at that time thinking of reverting to the original 2005 application for conversion of the stables to dwellings, following new changes to the NPPA. This is the current 2022 uh, application. However, the 2007 application bizarrely remains on the books as the Vale has no power, I understand, to force the applicant to withdraw this. Parish Council is supportive of realistic applications which would enable retention of commercial equine activity in our villages, but we do understand and realise that the racing industry is changing and smaller, less efficient units are less viable than they once were. It must be understood that if the stable yards are developed into housing, this will be a one-way track and reversal will not be possible. There will be no way back for establishments such as these. The site is within the AMB and the village is adjacent to a conservation area. We do have concerns over one, light pollution, and I note that appropriate lighting is a condition for the site. We do request that consideration be given to reducing the extent of fenestration, which might also reduce heating in the buildings. And two, increased traffic emerging from the site on what is a difficult bend. 
In summary, I feel that the current economic environment in the racing industry means a very uncertain future for small and inefficient establishments, and there is likely to be limited scope for deliveries involving 37 loose boxes. Therefore, with great reluctance, given the loss of the racing business, albeit dormant, I support the proposal, but would not wish to see further expansion or development on th this location. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Barrow. Um, there may be some questions for you. Uh, if, oh, I, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions for Councillor Barrow? No, you were very clear. I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so I'm now going to ask uh, members of the committee if anyone's got any questions for our officer. So any questions? Uh, Councillor Shaw. Yeah, um, I'm very concerned about the hundred glazing, particularly those um, glazed corridors, uh, because I do really think that that will cause light pollution. <laughs> Um, is there anything that we can do to mitigate that? Um, that would need to be put back to the applicants as a kind of design change, if that's what the committee feel is required. Um, I don't know at this stage you know, what the response would be. I suspect there would be an, an option to change the design to reduce the amount of glazing, if that was felt to be necessary. Um, from the officer's viewpoint, we understand the dark skies concern. Um, the government guidance, the guidance on dark skies relates principally to significant sources of illumination, such as you might find from street lighting um, or from sporting arenas with flood lighting. Domestic lighting generally uh, does not seem to figure in that concern. And there are obviously lots of houses in dark sky villages and the illumination from them is part and parcel. It's not significant in the same sense as significant as uh, illumination from street lights uh, and flood lighting. So, as this is a domestic proposal, your officers feel that the amount of lighting from it will not have more than a local effect. It won't lead to a glare in the sky, which is one of the real concerns with dark skies. But if members are concerned about this, obviously we can go back to the applicants. Seeking um, I think if it were just one building, I wouldn't be concerned, but three close together uh, will create a lot more light pollution than, than just a single building or um, light coming through um, roof lights. Uh, but um, I, 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 I'd probably take a bet that none of us around this table knows that much about writing or the impact of writing. Um, is there a opportunity to use some expertise from, from people actually know about writing to input into the design so that, so that any impact can be limited? Um, I, my recommendation would be that would be reasonable, really. It's, 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 of this scale um, because we are effectively talking about domestic lighting but again uh, if committee feel that would be helpful we can obviously explore that um, but my recommendation at the moment is that the lighting will not be significant enough to create a problem. Mm. Councillor Go. Uh, yeah just wanted to ask if there are any other options or any other methods you know just to mitigate to mitigate the lighting like not just by your interior design to just not change in the the exterior the building design um I, I mean the glazed corridors are designed to provide circulation space to connect the rooms at the state the stables as a, themselves are going to be uh, correct Converted into rooms, and so the corridors are designed to provide connect connectivity to those rooms. Um, so it is going to be, if if it is an issue members are worried about, it, it will be an external design issue. There isn't anything that can be resolved internally to change that because the corridors are required really in order to make the proposal work. Councillor Pickles. Um, but the report, I think I understand what it says about other development on the site and the state of the, of the existing application. Do you think you could just kind of 
I'd be just to rehearse the argument for us just so we're absolutely all on the same page yeah. about it. Okay, these are two alternatives, they cannot be implemented together. So, right. and the applicants have made it clear that this current application is the preferred option. So, um, were this application to be approved and implemented, the existing, the older application could not be implemented. So, it would fall away. Okay. Uh, and the likelihood is it will be withdrawn. And I'm right in thinking, therefore, if in the future they decided to re enter the equestrian business because economic circumstances change, they would have to make a brand new application and it would be reconsidered. Yeah. And again, residential house on site would be quite a large impact on those people. They would have quite a big say into what actually happened. Yeah, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. There'd be about 13 hectares of land left or outside the application site, which isn't a large amount of land to put an application of business onto based on the economics of the business and the understanding of the as Councillor Barrett referred to. So, so uh, but yes, if uh, any future proposal or threat point on the site, the remainder of the site will have to be subject to planning or planning application. It's the main work done before the committee. Martin, compliance condition 70, so no external lighting other than the reports of approved details. So what is that likely to look like? Or what is the, because I think that, you know, there is concern about dark skies, and particularly, well, some are concerned about internal lighting, but also external lighting. So what's that actually going to look like in terms of what sort of condition is that like to be? Obviously, we'll come back to, to council, but what, yeah. what can we expect in that from regions? Uh, well, limited external or no external. I mean, but with, you can put external security lighting onto buildings without under control. Yes. It's not the in itself. So mm -hmm. the idea is to prevent that occurrence. Yeah. So we're stopping any external security lighting mm -hmm. and any lighting of the access drive mm -hmm. that may be required for whatever reason. If you know, the applicants would need to submit details of that as part of the condition, and they need to justify why the lighting is required mm -hmm. and also explain the level of the light. So that we could control it. And if, it, if there is an argument that can be made, mm. uh, the level of that lighting would be limited to what is necessary, either by through control of the power of the lamps and also the timing mm. of which the lighting mm. goes on and off. Uh, but there's no indication that external lighting is needed. The access drive has no lighting on it at the moment. Um, but it gives us that control. And is it the case at the moment that uh, the applicant, if they so chose, could put lighting there at the moment, or would they need planning permission to put lighting there currently? Um, they could put lighting on the buildings without planning yeah. permission. So that could be done now, and we couldn't control anything. The angle of it, the spread of it, the intensity of it. Um, they probably couldn't put lighting onto the driveway without right. permission, but they could certainly do it on the building. Uh, further questions for Councillor Shelley. Yeah, just a couple, Martin. I was just wondering, 13 hectares that will be left, do we know exactly how they'll be accessed from the current building? So, you know, what, what route they'll be taken to access that land? Yeah, no, I mean, there isn't an obvious route from within the application site. Uh, there is a, a pathway that runs around to the west of the site, but that's very close to where these buildings are. So. There isn't an at the moment, there isn't another access uh, vehicle access to the site. It could be accessed potentially from the byways that surround the site. It's an obvious vehicle access to that. If they're not grazed, they'll need to be maintained. So mm -hmm. that would be my concern. The others, the in the biodiversity um, point five point two two mentioned about bat and bird house um, boxes. Is that dealt with in condition eight, which is details of ecological compensation and enhancement? Yes. It is. Yeah, it's okay. I just thought I'd share. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh. No, I just wondering oh. then, is there anything that we can request to show how access to the land will be gained? I mean, is that, I don't consider that unreasonable when you've got tractors and things entering or, or needing to gain access to the, the existing land. Um, I mean, firstly, there is the access to the existing house uh, that's a separate access mm -hmm. they've got potentially used, so there could be an access point from there. Okay. 
since since it was maintained. But, and there is an existing access drive to the west of these stables, which would remain. So if it was purely for maintenance, uh, that could be used as an access drive. Sorry, I, I took the original question to mean that this was set up. Yeah, oh no 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 for for the yeah for the existing land really just to maintain what they have. So. Western access can be good. Okay. But when we made this the site, this is a separate gated mm -hmm. driveway up to the house. Right, so they could. That's about so. Uh, yes. Um, once the development's complete and the houses are sold to individual uh, owners, um. Do, can we prevent them ex, um, installing external lighting mm -hmm. at that stage? Mm -hmm. We can do that. It's that. I want to confirm that. That's figures. Um, this is development going forward. So the condition of this is, if I understand this correctly, is there'll be no permitted development on any of these properties yeah. in the future. So they'd have to come back with a full planning application if you wanted to change anything. And the mobile home removal is also being conditioned. That's right. That's being so, uh, further questions for Martin? In which case, I might suggest we move into the base. I can't see any further. So would someone like to put forward a motion on this application? That's the figures. I mean, I think um, I agree with the position set out by Councillor Barrow is that um, it's not a perfect application because I think there are some depths for how can light and things. I, I think it's one we should be accepting. Hey, is there a second for that motion to uh, accept the officer's recommendation? Councillor Lugo. Yeah, hey, uh, right. Is there any debate? Would people like to say anything? I was going to say that I would like to explore more about what what we could actually say in the, in the, in the uh, conditions to support the need to ensure there's no light pollution. That's the concept. Well, we're assuming there's another debate that's yeah. something I'd like to explore. I mean, I, yeah, so we don't want to say anything on, on that. I, I think the difficulty I have, sorry, so I'm, I'm <laughs> sort of, the difficulty I have with that is it sounds like if we want to remove windows and we're concerned about the amount of corridor mm. windows, we would need to defer this and send it back to the applicant. So I think that, you know, we've got a condition for external lighting um, and I think short of, I think, I think if we approve this application, we can't really say, well, we'd like it to be redesigned with fewer windows, for example. So I'm not sure there's anything to do from my perspective, but I don't know what others think. How's it going? I really like, you know, just a large windows and, you know, just it's nice to have more than, all more than houses, like contemporary. They have huge windows, lots of light. When you use natural light instead of using you know, just electricity, you know, just put a, you know, just till 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 it's really dark. So on the on the other hand, you know, just uh, uh, yeah, probably we can uh, uh, ask you know just to use what kind of you know just interior design or something, you know, just measures or options would be to prevent this light, you know, just going outside if it's possible. I don't know. I can ask the officers. I mean, I mean, it might not be something to do with condition. It's something we can informative on, just to you know remind the applicants that the committee are particularly concerned about the light emanating from inside, and so you know to maybe design it in the best way they can. I, I don't know what uh, people think in terms um, of. I mean, the other thing which I was wondering is whether there was any form of glazing that would actually mm. sort of dim the light so that it wouldn't go out into the. I guess my worry is that if we condition it, then we're sort of redesigning the property. And so I think, uh, and my hope is that the app, I mean, I guess the difficulty is it's kind of unclear from this exactly what sort of glazing they're using. And I'm not a light expert, so I'm afraid I don't know whether it's even possible to get decent glazing. Yeah, well, that's, that's my problem because yeah. I know, so not yeah. you know from the fact that I don't like yeah. to see people shining search lights in the yeah. sky, you know. I suppose the only, the only um, saving grace is the fact that this is a courtyard, mm -hmm. so hopefully mm -hmm. where they position you, you've got the, the, the 
property to the back that hopefully the lights will be screened by the property in front of it so it, it could potentially stop that. Yeah, there are actually very, very few lights, lights, um, windows on the outside of the building, which, which, are, which are, I think is a good design feature actually, because it makes it actually look like it's um, still a kind of working business in the, yeah. the context of the size of the building. And also, out on the side, as you can see, that you know the site is massive in terms of the the back bit as well. So actually, it's a relatively small section of the site itself. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused with the word site, but you know what I mean. It's actually quite a large space. So. I mean, I think my view is I'm going to support the application because I don't think the light pollution is significant, it's significant to the extent that we would want to send this back to the applicant to redesign. Um, and that's where I stand, but I, others might feel differently. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm similar in as much as, you know, having three horses of my own, you know, when you see stables like that, it's such a shame, you know, to think we're converting them into property. But mm -hmm. East Hendred has seen its fair <clears> share of of stables or studs being converted mm. so you know it's purely because of the lack of, of requirements which is really shameful. Has anyone got anything further to say or should we take a vote on this application? In which case I would suggest we take a vote on this application to approve the officer's recommendations. So those in favour, those against, any abstentions? I think that was unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our speakers and thank you, Martin. Uh, I now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is, um, if I get the wording right, is um, Cedar Glen in Longworth. Uh, Susanna, I believe you're presenting this one. Thank you, Chair. I'll just share my screen. Great, we can see that now, Susanna, so whenever you're ready. Okay, perfect. Uh, this application has been brought to planning committee at the request of the planning manager. My first slides show the site in its context close to the edge of the built settlement of Longworth around Harris's Lane. The site used to contain a detached bungalow with outbuildings, which have since been demolished. The Cedar Glen site now benefits from a planning permission which was granted on the 4th of May 2022 for a replacement dwelling to the south part of the Cedar Glen site. This slide shows the site plan for the approved replacement dwelling. The current application seeks to erect a dwelling on what is effectively the northern half of the former Cedar Glen plot. And this slide shows the position of the approved dwelling to the south and the proposed detached dwelling to the north. As the exist bung existing bungalow and outbuildings have been demolished, officers consider it a realistic possibility the approved replacement dwelling will be constructed. This represents the applicant's fallback position, whereby even if permission is refused for the current application, a dwelling on the south of the site can be constructed. The proposed dwelling in the gap of the north of the site has been assessed against development plan policy on infill. Local plan policy CP4 manages development in smaller villages and Longworth Neighbourhood Plan Policy 1 is also relevant. I will come on to this later in my presentation and discuss the different interpretation of infill by the Parish Council and by officers. The proposed four bedroom detached dwelling would be set over one and a half storeys. It would be of Bradstone and timber cladding under a pitched slate roof. Uh, this is the first um, slide of elevations and then the second slide. And my next slide will show the proposed floor plans here. Now turning to the key planning considerations, your officer report outlined the material considerations and members will have seen the concerns raised by the parish council that the application resembles the footprint of a refused application reference P19 V2607, and also that the proposal does not meet the neighbourhood plan policy on infill. Looking in greater depth at the Parish Council concerns, the site plan for the 2019 refused application is now shown on the screen. To the north, a pair of semi-detached dwellings were proposed and to the south was a detached dwelling. 
This application was refused because it was not considered to comprise an infill proposal at the time, since there was only the centrally located bungalow on site at that stage, and there had been no established fallback position. However, under the current application, officers consider the fallback position of an approved dwelling on the south of the site, as now shown, should be given due weight in the decision making pro process. With regard to the interpretation of infill sites, Longworth Parish Council's position is that the site should be assessed on the basis of the situation when the neighbourhood plan was produced and adopted in 2016. Um, clearly, at that point, there was only the single bungalow in the centre of the site. The wording within the neighbourhood plan in respect of limited infill allows development subject to certain criteria. This includes the development um, on built up areas between existing houses. Um, so clearly, at the time of the adoption of the neighbourhood plan, the site did not fall between existing houses. And even currently, it still does not fall between existing houses, but we need to take account of the extant permission for the dwelling which has been permitted to the south. Officers do not consider the arrangement when the neighbourhood plan was ad adopted to be the current correct consideration. Rather, the current situation be should be assessed at the time of the decision making and this then allows for the fallback position to be included in the assessment. Given that the dwelling, the existing dwelling on site has been demolished, um, officers do consider there is a reasonable likelihood of the fallback position being implemented. As members will have seen from the officer report, there were no technical reasons for refusal. And accordingly, your officers have recommended the proposal for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Susanna. We might return to you for some questions once we've heard from our speaker this evening. Uh, so we have one speaker on this application, Mr. James Corris. Well, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, yes, excellent. Very good. Well, uh, as of everyone else, you've got three minutes when you're ready. Uh, thank you, councillors, for the opportunity to address you this evening. Uh, I don't intend to repeat all the points raised by Susanna. However, I think it's important to set out some background to the application, which may be helpful particularly in light of the comments made by the Parish Council during the consultation period. And I'd like to try and alleviate any concerns raised here if possible. I think it's important to set out chronology with respect to the application presented to you this evening. The applicant for this application is a local house builder who's purchased the plot following the original consent in 2020, which saw demolition of the existing Cedar Glen, construction of a replacement dwelling sited towards the southern extent of the plot. The applicant initially brought forward a Section 73 application to vary the extant permission, which was approved in May of last year. This application has been enacted through the demolition of the house, formerly known as Cedar Glen, um, including the applicant fulfilling their still liability duties and gaining conditional approval from building control for the replacement dwelling. Although the replacement dwelling has not been completed, this application becomes a material consideration to the delegated officers and is fundamental to the context in which the current application should be read. I know that the Parish Council comment makes speci uh, specific reference to the Longworth Neighbourhood Plan and the failure of the application to meet the policies, which is incorrect. Policy 1 describes a spatial plan for the village and criteria for development which can be supported. This policy additionally seeks to restrict encroachment on the open countryside for the promotion of limited infill development within the village's built up areas. The separate area around the crossroads of Appleton Road and Harris's Lane to the south of the main village is specifically defined as being a built up area in the positive wording. The proposed house is not detached from the built up areas of the village and by virtue of the extent consent on the plot does not encroach on the mm -hmm. countryside or beyond the settlement boundary. There's infill development by definition and as such wholly conforms to the Longworth neighbourhood plan. In addition, we'd like to say there's been no attempt to circumnavigate policies in the in the Vale local plan or Longworth neighbourhood plan by the applicant, which can be evidenced by the case history on plot and the change in ownership. It's considered that the applicant has brought forward a higher quality scheme for the replacement dwelling approved and enacted or alongside the application before you, which makes a more efficient use of land and infills a gap in the street scene. There's also not been any local opposition to the proposal apart from the parish council. Um, the applicant has additionally asked me to offer reassurance that there is no intention to redefine and set on the boundary in the future and clarify that the open pilot plan will be sold with the enacted and yeah, 
I'm happy to answer any questions from the committee to the best of my knowledge and would respectfully ask for the delegated officer's recommendation to approve the appeal. Thank you very much. Well, I'll ask if any members of the committee have any questions. I can't see any. Um, oh, Councillor Gover. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Yes, can I ask you more just first the, uh, the regional commission, yeah, which was granted, uh, uh, actually, it, it, it is dated May uh, this last year, yes, May 22, yeah. So, and, and if you know just why, why uh, you know, just the single application was the main project for two houses, like in one application. So then the, there was a commission in uh, 2020 for um, how a, a single house, yeah. Um, and then the applicant for the current scheme that we're discussing this evening submitted a section 72 to vary that application, which was approved uh, last year, um, and has then submitted the current application um, for uh, an infill dwelling to the north of that that was previously approved before um, they had acquired the site. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Case, I'll say, okay, I wish to say thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, and I'll now turn to any questions members of the committee have for our officer. Uh, so, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Downing? Councillor Barrow. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I was just thinking that the, the P19 application, and it, I guess it's the reference to the neighbourhood plan. So, the, the come up from the parish council is that, contrary to the neighbourhood plan, it does not allow for development within the garden as dwellings, which transition between village and countryside. And I just wonder whether that, uh, Suzanne, has a comment on that. Uh, uh, just bear with me a second. Um, you can't prevent development, but nevertheless, it's actually a significant. Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as I say, I think you know it, it clearly does allow for um, at the time of the of the twenty nineteen um, permission. Obviously, that was that that application was being looked at as a as a sort of a redevelopment of the entire site, um, given that it was proposed to remove the one property and um, construct all three, um, and and they were as I say then there were concerns about um, sort of impact on garden. Whereas um, on on the current um, proposal, officers took the view that that um, every, as I say, all of the development will be in the former in the former garden area. But the um, neighbourhood plan policy um, obviously allows for infill within on including on garden land. Okay. Thank you. Are there any further questions for Susanna? I, Councillor Shelley. Susanna, I'm really sorry, to, but, but you mentioned about um, infill within properties, and you're quite right. Actually, the second property is just an application that's been approved. Um, it hasn't actually been built yet. So I'm, you know, I'm torn really as to whether your comment saying, you know, we we have to approve this because the house is going to be built. Whether that's whether that's a hundred percent true, or whether you know really an infill is something that is infilling between a current dwelling or two current dwellings. Um, I think I think that is this sort of the you know from from um, the office perspective. I think that is the key consideration. Um, clearly, there is a permission. For a dwelling on the southern part of the site, uh, the um, the argument can be put forward that by demolition they have commenced, um, and therefore that that can be implemented, um, sort of you know at any at any point in the future. Um, or I understand the point that there is no um, there is no dwelling there um, that that anybody can see, but I think it's just um, you know officers felt that the weight should be substantial weight should be given to the fallback position that there is a realistic possibility, um, a probably likely that 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 dwelling will be forthcoming, and then at that point um, it, it it would represent infill. 
Um, it, almost if we if we don't support it, um, the applicant or, or another developer could build the exist the property which does have permission and then reapply. Um, you, you know, in a year's time, and and then sort of achieve achieve what potentially they could be. But you know, they they could um, achieve at this point in time. Um, I'm not sure if um, the planning manager's got any sort of other comments about, um, you know, sort of how it how it should be considered. Um, but as I say, from from my perspective, it it was just that um, it they didn't that 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 seems to be a sort of an you know a, a, a sensible approach to take to the fallback position um, that if we refuse it and then they do go ahead and build the build the existing. One they have permission for you, you sort of just push it pushing um an application down the line really thanks and i think this is the key point of debate so we'll have that debate in a second but are there any further questions uh for Susanna before we move into debate because i think uh we probably do want to debate that okay oh yeah sorry emily do you want to come in just to clarify as well um that there has been building control approval um, granted for four plans for the um, demolition of the bungalow and its replacement. So there are moves that obviously demolitions occurred, they've applied for building control approval. Um, I understand as well, SIL, they're in the process of, of clearing the SIL liability. Um, so there are the signs that officers have taken on board. It's not just a case of there's a there's a, a permission there. There are signs that it is moving through the process, which is what Susanna was outlining and why we've given it weight. Mm -hmm. Are there any final questions or shall we uh, call for a motion? Okay, I think I'm gonna call for a motion on this uh, application. So would anyone like to put forward a motion? Councillor Pickles? Um, I, I think we should approve the application. And um, I would just say to the point that we just discussed, I think it's probably better for local residents, both property civility at the same time, purely from an efficiency perspective, but also disruption. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I may mean, accept Sudan. So, but um, Sudan is um, you know, reasoning about the fallback position and the reality. So that's why I'd like to propose we support the application. Do we have a seconder, Councillor Batstone? <clears throat> yes, I'm happy to second this for the same sort of reason. I think I think it's just more efficient to um, have one application uh, to approve this application rather than to delay it until we build the first building and then. Um, any objection uh, disappears effectively. So uh, let's do it in one rather than two. Uh, is, is anyone got anything further to say? Councillor Barrett. I guess I, I'm concerned about the neighbourhood plan, I guess, the comments there in relation to building in the garden. Um, I mean, I'm going through a neighbourhood plan with our village at the moment and uh, going through the examiner stage. And obviously the aim is for the, the local population to have some control over management of development. And I guess, you know, they're, I won't say they're, they're overrun in a case like this, you know, what is the value of the neighbourhood plan? They must have some strength in it. And also, I guess, um, I'm not, I mean, it's, it, this is a very small village, and I'm not sure whether it's, I know that some of the villages in my ward are regarded as open countryside. I'm not sure whether Longworth is the same, whether that might have an effect, but I'm, I'm unhappy about it and going against the neighbourhood plan, I think. <coughs> Councillor Shelley. Yeah, I, th I think, again, when you look at, um, section 5.10 and 5.11, you know, I've got a comment saying, I think if applications come here again, where uh, there's quite an, you know, a large garden and a property to put in the far corner, mm. um, then I'd be probably wondering what's going to happen, you know, whether that can then be deemed as an infill as well. So, you know, from a planning <laughs> member point of view, I'll certainly be looking at, at plans more rigorously when they come to committee, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the Longworth Neighbourhood Plan as well, I mean, you know, one of the things we've got here is we've got a, a disagreement over interpretation of it, but it does say that, unless I'm misreading, it still say that even where there is some sort of link, it shouldn't be more than two detached dwellings. Mm. Um, so it's not the case that, so the Neighbourhood Plan still does have weight in the sense, I mean, it does it has full weight, but um, it has weight in the sense that it's not, we're not saying, oh, well, actually, we can put a semi detached two houses there. So the original application in 2019 still wouldn't stand and wouldn't be permissible because it wouldn't accord, uh, it wouldn't accord in my, my reading with the Longworth Neighbourhood Plan. Um, and I do think it's probably just delaying it if we uh, if we refuse today. 
But I, mean, I actually feel it, 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 it's supportive of the local mm -hmm. planning in, in range terms. Anything further on this? In which case, I'm going to call for a vote. So, those in favour of this application? Those against? Any abstentions? I think that was eight to one. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, well, that's our final item. So, with that, it just leaves me to thank our officers, our speakers, uh, and indeed all of you, uh, members of the committee. Uh, and with that, can I have a confirm the live stream is ended? Thank you very much, Susie. Thank you, everyone.